I really like the iPhone. It would be difficult to do this job for as long as I have if I didn't. But one of the advantages of what I do is that I get to read all the comments from people sharing their frustrations about the things that the iPhone does or doesn't do. So in this video, I thought I'd go through some of the most common complaints that I see from iPhone users and show you the fixes for each one. Okay, let's get into it. Let's say that you've selected and copied some text, maybe from an email, a website in Safari, or even from a third-party service like ChatGPT, and you want to paste it into something like an email. Something that you'll notice quite often is that when you do this, the content gets pasted with all of its original formatting, which can look really out of place depending on what you're doing with the text. For example, I've just taken some text from ChatGPT and pasted it into a reply in an email, and it immediately messes up the formatting of my message. Thankfully, there is a really easy fix for this. With the content copied to your clipboard, long press anywhere in the body of the email and look for the button that says paste and match style. You might see it straight away, but if not, press the little right arrow in the contextual menu and you'll normally see it in the new menu that appears. Choose paste and match style and your content will be pasted in the format of your email. Let's say you've been capturing a video on your iPhone in portrait mode and as soon as you start recording, you realize you prefer to turn your phone on its side and capture it in landscape mode instead. But you didn't stop recording, you just carried on. The problem now is that when you go to your photo library and view the video that you just captured, you essentially have a landscape video stuck in portrait mode. Thankfully, it is really easy to fix this. First, press the edit button at the bottom of the screen. Then use the little left pointing arrow drag bar, which is the one just next to the play button. Long press on that, until the bar turns yellow and then drag it across until the moment where you flipped your phone on its side. That trims out all of the portrait footage from the start that you don't want. Tap done in the upper right corner and choose save video. Now that you've removed the unwanted beginning, your landscape video is still showing in portrait mode. To fix that, go back into edit, then press the crop button at the bottom of the screen. Look for the rotate button in the top left corner. It's a square with a little arrow next to it. Tap this you'll usually only need to press it once to get the video in the correct orientation, but if not, press it a few times until it looks right. Press done in the top right corner and your video will now be saved in the proper orientation with the unwanted portrait section removed. A frustration I often hear people talk about when it comes to their iPhone is how calls are displayed when they receive them. If you're unaware, there are two ways that your iPhone can show incoming calls, either as a banner alert or a full screen alert. A banner means that whatever you're doing on your phone won't be interrupted. The call alert will drop down from the top of the screen, letting you accept or reject the call from that small banner or swipe it away and carry on with whatever you are doing. The other method is full screen, where an incoming call takes over your entire display, stopping whatever you're doing and forcing you to interact with the call there and then. Most people tend to prefer the banner version, but whichever one you like best, here's how to choose it. Go to settings, scroll to the bottom, and choose apps, then tap phone. Look for the option called incoming calls. Tap on it and you can choose between banner and full screen. There's also another setting that people often forget about, how your phone announces calls. This feature reads out the name of the person calling you. Tap into announce calls and you can choose from always, where it will always announce the name, or headphones and car, where it will only do this when connected to your car or using headphones. You can also choose headphones only or never if you don't want it to announce calls at all. Of course, a really common complaint that I see all the time is that people wish they could remember all of the tips that we cover in these videos. And if that sounds like you, you should definitely check out iPhone Essentials Plus. It's my dedicated training portal for the iPhone. More than 150 lessons with more content on the way. It's broken down into modules, each one covering a different part of your iPhone. Inside every module, you'll find lessons, and each lesson comes with a short video showing you exactly what to do, a step-by-step -step guide with screenshots and a downloadable PDF. So no matter how you like to learn, you're covered. You can go through everything at your own pace or just use the search tool to jump straight to whatever you're trying to figure out. There are no ads, no sponsors, just content, and it's all available for a single one-time price with all future updates included. And if you've got a Mac, I've also launched Mac Essentials Plus. It works exactly the same way, just for your Mac instead. You can buy either one individually, or bundle the two together for the best possible price. If that sounds good to you, scan the QR code that you can see on screen or check the link in the description or the pinned comment. 
This fix is specific to iPhones that have the camera control button. That's the little button down at the bottom right of your iPhone when you're holding it. And it's featured on the iPhone 16 and 17 ranges. A common complaint that I hear is people accidentally triggering the camera just by pressing this button. It's understandable, especially since most people hold the phone in their right hand, which means that your thumb naturally rests close to that camera control button. Thankfully, there is a really easy fix that lets you keep using the camera control button without triggering it by mistake. Go into settings, scroll down and choose camera. Then tap on camera control, which you'll find near the top of the screen. Change it from single click to double click. This does exactly what it sounds like. Camera control will now only activate when you double click the button, not when you press it once. I would also recommend enabling require screen on if it isn't already turned on. This means that your iPhone needs to be awake and active for the double click to open the camera. If you switch this off, you can double click the button even when your phone screen is off to launch the camera straight from your pocket. Whether that's useful or not will depend on your personal preference. If you don't like the compact tab view in Safari on iOS 26, there is a quick and easy way to change it. Go to settings, scroll all the way down to the bottom and tap apps. Then scroll down and choose Safari. In here, scroll to the tab section and you'll see that compact is enabled by default in iOS 26. There are two other layout options that you can choose from. If you select top, you'll get a split layout where the address bar sits at the top of the screen, while your website controls, like the back button, share button, tabs, and bookmarks, stay at the bottom. If you select bottom, you'll get a kind of double address bar layout where the address bar sits just above a row of your website controls. Try both and see which one feels most comfortable to you. By the way, if you're enjoying the content here, you should definitely check out The Proper Weekly. It's my free weekly newsletter that lands in your inbox every Friday, packed with tech news from the week, content I've been enjoying, and a handy tip for the Apple ecosystem. Just scan the QR code on screen to sign up, or follow the link in the description. If you go into your calendar and look at the bottom right corner, you'll see your inbox. And if you're anything like me, your calendar probably has a lot of items in here that have had changes made by other people where you just need to click OK to confirm that you've seen them. That's fine if there are only one or two, but if you've got a long list, it's a waste of time having to go through each one and press OK over and over again. Thankfully, there is a shortcut hidden away in the app. If you long press on any of the OK buttons in the calendar inbox, you'll see an OK All button appear. Tap on that and it'll do exactly what it says. It will press OK for every item currently in your calendar inbox. You probably already know about the shake to undo feature. It's where if you make a mistake while typing on your iPhone, you can just shake your iPhone and an undo alert will appear on your screen. Tap it and it will undo whatever you just did. However, if you find that this activates by accident, it can be more frustrating than useful. And in that case, you might want to turn it off. To do that, go to settings, choose accessibility, then scroll down and tap touch. In here, you'll see the option for shake to undo. Just turn it off. From now on, shaking your iPhone won't trigger the undo alert. You might be wondering what happens next time that I make a mistake and I want to undo it. The good news is that your iPhone still has an undo feature. You can use three fingers and tap anywhere on the screen. When you do that, a menu bar appears at the top with options for cut, copy, paste, undo, and redo. Whichever options are available at that moment will be highlighted. In this case, tap the undo button in the top left as many times as you need to to remove your recent changes. And when you're done, just tap out of the menu to return to what you were doing. Persistent badge notifications on your iPhone can be a real pain. If you're not sure what I mean, badge notifications are the little red dots that appear in the top right corner of an app icon. For whatever reason, there are times when no matter what you do inside the app, that badge just won't go away. The phone app is often guilty of this, but there might be other apps on your phone that cause the same problem. Unfortunately, there isn't always a reliable fix to clear those badges, but there is a more heavy-handed option that can help. You can disable badge notifications on a per-app basis. If you'd prefer not to see badges for a particular app, go to Settings, then scroll down and tap Notifications. Scroll through the notification style list to find the app that you want to adjust. Tap into it and toggle off badges. You'll still receive all your normal notifications and the app will continue to function as usual, but the red badge won't appear on your home screen anymore. Ironically, the one app that you can't do this for is the Settings app, which is the one that most people seem to have trouble with. 
For example, my iPhone 17 Pro currently has a red badge on the settings app because Apple wants me to add Apple Care to my new AirPods. So if you happen to know how to remove the settings badge, drop me a comment and let me know. By default, when you press the volume up or down buttons on your iPhone, the volume that changes is the ringer or notification volume, unless you're watching a video or listening to music. And in that case, those buttons control the media volume instead. Generally, this system works quite well, but one problem that it can cause is that you might press the volume buttons thinking that you're adjusting your media volume when in fact you've just changed your ringer volume by mistake. If you find this happens a lot, there's a setting that you can change to stop it. Go to settings, then tap sounds and haptics and turn off change with buttons. With this disabled, the volume buttons will only adjust the volume of the media that you're listening to. If you want to change the ringtone or alert volume, you'll need to do that manually in the sounds and haptics section of settings. If you use wireless CarPlay and get into your car, only to find that CarPlay doesn't activate, the first instinct for most people is to start fiddling with the connection settings on the car's dashboard. But nine times out of 10, it is much easier and faster to fix the issue directly from your iPhone. Of course, make sure that you're doing this when the car is stationary so that it's safe and legal. Then go to settings, tap Bluetooth, and look under the My Devices section. You should see the name of your car's CarPlay setup. In my case, it's listed as Audi MMI, followed by a four-digit number. If your iPhone hasn't connected automatically, you'll see it marked as not connected. Just tap on it, and within a few seconds, it should change to connected. A moment later, CarPlay will appear on your car's dashboard and you'll be good to go. Macro mode on your phone's camera lets you take extreme close-up photos and your iPhone can automatically detect when to switch between the regular camera and macro mode for you. In most cases, it does a pretty good job. It recognizes when you're holding the phone close to a subject and assumes that you want a macro shot and when you're not, it stays in the normal mode but it can sometimes be a bit overzealous. Jump in between lenses when you don't want it to. If you'd prefer to have manual control instead, here's how to do it. Go into settings, scroll down and tap camera. Then scroll to the photo capture section and look for macro control. Toggle this on. Now the next time that you hold your camera close to a subject, macro mode won't automatically switch on. Instead, you'll see a small flower icon appear in the bottom left corner of the screen. Tap that icon whenever you want to enable macro mode manually. This next one is an iOS 26 feature that I think is actually really useful, but I can completely understand why some people don't like it. In iOS 26, when you take a screenshot, it now skips the little preview that you used to get in iOS 18 and takes you straight into the edit menu instead. If you'd prefer to go back to the old method, here's how you do it. Go to settings, tap general, then scroll down and tap screen capture. In here, disable full screen previews. Once you do this, your iPhone will bring back the old screenshot workflow from iOS 18, where you see the small thumbnail preview before deciding what to do with it. While you're in this section, there is another option worth checking, CarPlay screenshot. Unless you specifically want to capture your CarPlay display, I'd recommend turning this off. With it disabled, the next time that your iPhone is connected to CarPlay and you take a screenshot, you'll only capture your iPhone screen and not the CarPlay interface. If you use the Passwords app on your iPhone and you go to sign into a website, sometimes Safari doesn't recognize the username or password fields properly. When that happens, your first instinct is probably to leave the website, open the Passwords app, find the login, copy it, and then come back to paste it in. But you don't need to do that. Instead, just long press for a moment in the email or username field. One of the options that appears will be autofill. Tap that then choose passwords. This will take you straight into your list of saved passwords. If your iPhone recognizes which account you're trying to log into, that password will appear at the top. If not, you can use the search bar at the bottom or scroll through your list to find it manually. Tap into the account that you want, then tap on username and it will be filled in automatically. In many cases, this will also trigger your password to autofill as well. But if it doesn't, just repeat the same step in the password field. It is a much quicker way to fill in your login details than jumping back and forth between Safari and the Passwords app. So there you go, some of the most common iPhone complaints along with fixes for each one. What do you think? Did I cover a problem that you've had? Or is there a fix that you think I should have included? Drop me a comment and let me know. 
And as ever, if you found this video useful, do please consider leaving me a like and subscribing to the channel for more content like this in the future. See you on the next video.